charity, accountability in three, two. Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9, The Bigger Picture. I'm Mary Garofalo. It's a Canadian charity that claims to raise money to help the poor in Cuba and Africa. But its founder is being called a con artist who's accused of donating his time to escort services. Our Alex Mihailovic tonight with a story about a man some consider a patron of the poor and others a pimp. I know what tough life is all about. And I always said, one day I will give back. And I'm going to do that. Meet James Arian. Why is he so emotional? Well, maybe because his life is somewhat of a paradox. You see, on one hand, as the founder of the Orion Foundation, a charity that claims to help AIDS victims in Africa and the poor in Cuba, he considers himself almost saintly. The charity is there to save lives. The charity is there to help people. He claims his foundation has raised hundreds of millions of dollars to help those that his website terms as having fallen through the cracks of society. But there's another side to James Arian you might be interested in. It's alleged he operates fronts for several high-class escort agencies where prostitutes get paid big bucks for sex. Now, James Arian's worlds have collided. His dirty laundry aired for everyone to see in a scathing front page article. The headline screamed, Sex and Charity. It's not what a particular reporter says about you. That doesn't matter. What really matters is what's here. James Arian sat down with 16 by 9 for an exclusive interview about all the shocking allegations. Why would anyone try to hurt a charity that has absolutely nothing to do with this at all? But it is his charity at the center of the firestorm and his character that could go up in flames. I won't even walk by a wet sidewalk and I see a worm on the ground without picking it up and putting it in the grass so it won't get stepped on. His Orion Foundation is one of 85,000 charities registered in this country. The organization has reportedly raised a whopping $200 million worth of cash and goods over the past two years. The donors work with us. And with the assistance of those donors, we are able to accomplish great things. Last month at a fundraiser, the charity collected $10,000 in donations for a Cuban orphanage. Here's Julia Bierlena, an employee of the charity and native of Cuba. It's been a dream to do something for my people. Not everybody gets to do that. According to Mr. Arian, the money raised was sent to the city of Camagoy, Cuba. 16 by 9 cameras followed the foundation and the money trail. This is the original house, okay? But obviously it's too small for 180 kids. So where they done, they uh, built this little uh, ha uh, houses, which they also are the, uh, for the school, you know, to teach. Orion produced for 16 by 9 this receipt as proof that this was the real deal. According to this document, the money was wired directly to the local government. The communist politicians promised to use it for the orphans. Rene Alcantara of the Orion Foundation took care of the transaction. It is real. As you can see, it took me three banks to do a wire transfer to Cuba. Although 16 by 9 was not allowed to shoot inside the orphanage, the foundation handed us this video. If you see these kids playing in the break uh, time, they, they just enjoying themselves with a piece of rock, with a bottle of medicine, with, with anything. So I, I just, I know with so little we can give so much. Cuba, which was rocked by three devastating hurricanes last year, also received plenty of goods from the Orion Foundation. The foundation is headquartered here in Stouffville, just outside of Toronto on these pristine 10 acres. One building is Arian's stately home, the other his office. 16 by 9 was given exclusive access to Orion's warehouse full of charity goods. As you can see, a lot of it's already labeled. For example, hospitals, that box has to go to hospitals. We've sent down, just in 2008 alone, 12 containers, 12 40-foot containers of humanitarian aid to Cuba. The bikes you see here belong to a charity run by Harold Hussein, a former Toronto radio and television news weatherman. He says he shipped 15 containers with the help of the Orion Foundation. Tell us a little bit about what you got there in the file. Well, this is a record of all the containers that were sent in 2008. While 16 by 9 found examples of legitimate charitable work by the foundation in Cuba, the charity's operation in Africa is raising some serious questions. 
The charity has been accused of providing tax receipts for amounts larger than the actual donation. James Arian says this is legit, but others disagree. It's quite a lengthy process to investigate a charity and to shut it down. Kathy Barr works for Imagine Canada, a nonprofit organization that keeps an eye on charities. 225 charities are members of this organization, but the Orion Foundation isn't one of them. We identify problems like this and those sorts of charities are not allowed to join. The Orion Foundation claims to send life-saving drugs to thousands of HIV and AIDS victims in Africa. It's on the ground, it's being dispensed, it's saving lives. Grant Young is one of three Orion Foundation directors. He says he has witnessed the donations at work. So I met a number of the HIV patients and uh, actually some of them were crying because they found out who we were, that we were the Orion people and we we're the ones that actually saved their lives. A recent investigation alleges that Orion works with a tax shelter called the Canadian Organization of International Philanthropy, or COIP. Reportedly, donors who contribute to it are issued tax receipts up to several times the value of their donations. James Arian's foundation allegedly also follows this practice of overvaluing drug donations he calls pharma and issuing inflated tax receipts. We give a donation receipt for the value of the pharma that we receive as a gift in kind. So the wholesale price of drugs in India is $10. The drugs are valued at $13 in Canada. Yes. What the Orion Foundation says and openly says that what they do is that they will give you a tax receipt for the $13. Yes. Is that legal? And that, according to Kathy Barr, is where the Orion Foundation is in trouble. People that donated to the Orion Foundation will most likely be audited and will most likely have to repay that money. The Orion Foundation is now being audited for a third time. I know because they told me here the foundation is being audited for now two or three years in the road. So, I mean, if something bogus here, I think Canada would take their tax uh, shelter out. If you hear that a charity has been deregistered or has lost their charitable status because of involvement in a tax shelter, if you donated to that charity, you are going to get audited almost certainly. Audit aside, James Arian says he's not profiting from Orion. For him, it's strictly a labor of love. I don't take a salary personally. I do it. I love it. But Mrs. Arian is. She takes home $120,000 a year as a salaried employee, and the two directors earn $65,000 a year. So who's paying the bills? James Arian, the patron of the poor, or sex trade profiteer? A recent Toronto Star investigation exposed Arian's alleged scheme that allows escort agencies to sell sex to credit card carrying customers. With Arian's help, Johns pay their favorite call girls using plastic. The transaction is billed to one of Arian's computer consulting companies, such as Neodex Services. That's got nothing to do with Orion. Again, the oil and water scenario, uh, one doesn't have to do anything to do with the other. It is alleged that a credit card transaction when purchasing sex shows up on a bill as a computer consulting fee. The John's wife is none the wiser, and the card companies can continue to say that they don't deal with prostitution rings. Allegedly, James Arian's company takes a cut of the profit. Oddly enough, neither Arian nor his colleagues at the Orion Foundation deny that he's involved in the sex trade. Can you clearly say, I do not have ties to any of this? I can only tell you that it's an inappropriate question in reference to the charity. It has nothing to do with the charity at all. If the government knows about it, everybody knows about it. So, you know, he's still on the business if it's what it is. But for me, I work for the guy. I work for the Orion Foundation, so that's what I'm focused on. I'm focused on helping people. If what we've told you so far doesn't concern Orion donors, perhaps this will. Arian has reportedly declared bankruptcy not once, but twice. At the time of this interview, Arian insisted that he will not allow any questions about his reputation to overshadow the Orion Foundation. If it ever came down to the point where I actually would have to leave the organization for its betterment, I would. And just days later, that's exactly what he did. Orion employee Rene Alcantara talked to us on his behalf. I'm giving you this uh, resignation from James Arian. He wants the, the foundation to go on as if nothing happens because it's doing a lot of good works to a lot of people. Although James Arian has chosen to walk away from the Orion Foundation, it is unlikely that this will be the last time you'll see him in the charity business. Arian already has a website up for a new charitable organization, the Eden Foundation. According to our sources, Eden has not been granted the status of a charitable organization. 
yet.